What's good, family? Back at it again with another video. Um, before I get started, just hope everybody's doing extremely well. You know what I am. You know, I'm trying to take care of some situations right now. Everything, somebody's going good though, so I can't complain. Hope everybody's doing well. If not, uh, you know, uh, hope everybody's just uh, continuing to press forward and be persistent in whatever pursuits, goals, and dreams that you have. Um, before I get started in this video, as always, I ask you to please like, share, and subscribe. And even if you dislike this video, leave a comment in the description below about why you dislike this video and maybe we can figure some things out. I think that's the thing with YouTube that we um, um, do not see often why people dislike a video. So just leave your opinions. All opinions are accepted uh, and appreciated. And uh, if it's not a troll, then other than that, we appreciate everything. Um, uh, all the information taken in, I may learn something, uh, you know, as I go and continue forward. But anyway. I'm um, going to talk today about what to do after the protest. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, I did the what to do after the finals for young black males and so forth and so on. But this video is for black women and black males as as if the, uh, as was the last video that we just did as well. And the thought that um, what is um, to do after the protest. See, what's so different about the civil rights movement, what's so amazing about the civil rights movement, it had not been done before. Um, you gotta understand is this, um, uh, the civil rights movement brought in a usher in a revolution, um, one that sent, that was, um, very peaceful, uh, that we took everything, you know, um, but at the same time, we took everything knowing, uh, uh, that we were not going to take everything. That doesn't make sense, but let me explain it to you. Before the civil rights movement, everything that happened to a black person, whether they got lynched, uh, hung, killed, raped, robbed, beaten, whatever, we had to take it with a smile. And every time we see them, yes sir, and shuck and jive and smile, and it, we, we couldn't have an intimidating look on our face. And even if a mother seen her son just get hung, the very next day she was probably expected to go back in and clean up the house of the same people uh, who were there to witness the hanging of her son, if that makes sense. And that, I don't mean to be that extreme about it. But, I mean, you understand where I'm going with this. Everything that happened to us, whether it was being us financially taken away of our land, uh, not in Africa, but I mean in America, uh, whatever it may be, we had to take every suffering, uh, harmful, uh, discouraging, ugly aspect of being black in America with a smile, or at least not show us being frustrated one bit. Jackie Robinson is a perfect example. We don't even have to be extreme as hangings or whatever. We can look at Jackie Robinson. How they said he picked Jackie because they knew he was mild mannered. And if you've seen the movie 42, you saw he broke down in the locker room. But when he was out there on the field, no matter if they called him the N word 50 times a monkey, threw rocks at him, did whatever, he had to take it with a smile or at least take it without showing any visible signs of anger. So when the civil rights movement came, it married those two together of we're not gonna maybe not pick up guns or we're maybe not gonna fight back, which was, you know, I believe in the ideal of self defense, but at that time it was so profound because they were like, We're gonna do something. We can't be go without a voice, period. And they said we gotta we can eat at the restaurant, we better get eat in the back, we're not gonna do that, we're gonna go eat at the front. He said, if we want to ride the bus and get transportation, y'all can take our money, but we got to send it back. I'm sitting in front. You know, um, something happened. Well, we're going to march about it. We're going to voice it, and we're going to tell you our frustration. You know, maybe we're against the odds and everything is stacked against us, but we're going to go inside the streets, not only our communities, but we're going to go march on Washington and go to y'all communities and, and, and go to the media and show what's happening, and we're going to do everything we can to try to change that. Um, uh, and that's what happened with the protest, but that was a huge difference, and that was a huge climb up, and in this world, you have to grow and progress, um, I don't believe in this, this thing personally, because I believe that humans are, at least on this earth, the most dominant, uh, forces, um, um beings, um, uh, uh, human wise, uh, there may be more out there. I don't know, you know, about all that. But I make the point is this: they had this thing where they say the great ape or the great human or the great whatever. It may be mammal, maybe a whale, maybe an elephant. It's called evolution. So you have to evolve as time go on. And if you don't, you will be left behind. Henceforth, you will be extinct. Uh, you understand what I mean? So you have to constantly evolve. So something that I'm seeing is 50 years later, we're protesting. 
we're not we don't have the same organization as the Panthers do. We don't preach the same state of self defense and, and as the Black Panthers did. We don't preach the same uh level of everything. So I wouldn't say that we regressed, but just protesting now is something that we've done for too long, so it's time to evolve. So everybody always say, well, let's go out there and voice our opinion. The number one thing you're doing if you protest, you need to give yourself a pat on the back. You need to look in the mirror and appreciate yourself, appreciate your blackness, appreciate your family, friends, whoever may even go into the protest with you, or even if you just roll by yourself. Because the number one thing you've done, you're self-aware, and you're aware mental enough to know that something ain't right, and you want to try to change or at least voice an opinion or at least voice your frustration. So I'm not discrediting that. But what I'm saying is we have to now evolve from just protest and we have to do more than that. And I don't understand with President Obama because even the criticism of Black Lives Matter, I'm not saying that any end of the spectrum is right. And no specific one way is right. No specific one opinion is right. But what I'm saying is this. What can we do now to try to make our frustrations and turn them into change? So I'm going to do something that nobody else has ever done because we always had these debates and these discussions and every time race relations happen and every time uh, Dylan Roof can go inside of an AME church and kill people and, and then 50 years ago you can bomb the little girls in the church and you had the same stuff going on but we just need discussion and dialogue and we didn't talk about race in America. Cam Chancellor happened where he wanted to run out of gym for off-season workouts and women called the police and the police dispatch only wanted to know about the black guy and he said well we just got to talk more about race relations in America. Well we threw talking about race relations. When you have when you can go on websites and, and Instagrams and Twitter accounts and everything where you're seeing people that are, uh, and not just saying, oh, no, I got good hair, so I'm, I'm one half Native American and one foot. No, I don't mean that. I mean, real talk, you can go in there and see somebody they're saying that they're African American, Korean, uh, uh, Mexican, this, blah, 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 and it's like four or five different races mixed, and you can actually see it. You know, when you have stuff like that, race relations go out the window because we live in a country that's so diverse. When you got to have a job that's saying you got to be bilingual just to hold this position because there's so many different languages out here in America, we cannot su suffice having one employee to speak one language. We need you to speak more than one. We need you to be a, a, um, a utility for our company. So I say all this to say this, race, race relations, race discussion out the window because I wouldn't say we live in a post-segregated state or a post-racial state. Henceforth, the school in Mississippi that's just now being desegregated, and that's just now being uh, 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 integrated in 2016. You can go look that up. I may leave it in the description box below. But what I'm saying is this, before I get into a rant, uh, bear with me before you click off. What I'm saying is this, we got to do some more things at the protest. So I'm going to give you um, five things that you need to do. Or that we need to do as a people, because not just you, because I mean me too, because we all need to do this. Five things you need to do after you go to a protest, or after you finish a protest, or after you feel like you need to go to a protest, or whatever it may be. Five things we need to do after a protest. <clears throat> Number one thing I told you, pat yourself on the back. You're mentally aware enough to know that things need to be changed, and you're willing to at least take physical action to change that, meaning walking, protesting, exhausting yourself, going into the summer heat, doing all this kind of stuff to protest the death or injustice or unlawful arrest or whatever a specific person particularly of the black race. So now we'll talk about um, what can you do to, um, uh, what can you do after the protest? That's number one, pat yourself on the back, congratulate yourself, understand and love yourself enough and love yourself and look in the mirror and be proud of yourself that you're doing this. But two, what you need to do is we need to support black business. I say it all the time. It doesn't make any sense if we're out there buying from the same company that uh, uh, that pushed the oppression of our people or any race of people for that matter. I was watching the episode of the Carmichael show where um, the I can't think of her name is, but one of the characters said, she said, that's why I don't buy iPhones because they're making um, a child, uh, making little children work and do these iPhones and almost like, uh, I wouldn't say sweatshops, but almost like these um, slave conditions for low wages. So they have no child labor laws in their country. So every time you buy an iPhone, you're feeding into and paying into the oppression of a people. So I say all this to say this. <clears throat> Um, it's to buy black because we can take care of things in our own community. 85% of all black jobs, um, uh, I 
um, 85% of black businesses in Ohio, the percentage is higher in some studies, uh, hire black people. And jobs are the number one thing that we need to take care of. We need to be in a better financial state to be able to hire attorneys, be able to hire lawyers, be able to hire this, hire that, be able to have more fair hiring practice and putting more African-American police officers in our own community, being able to put more African-American firefighters, mayors, uh, all this kind of stuff, and being able to take control of our own community. So our number one thing I'll tell you is to buy black because with more economics in the community, more wealth can spread it, more uh, money can go inside of the educational system, whether the city or the government or the state or whoever gives um, educational funds, we can say bump all that. Um, boom, here goes my business doing well. I sell uh, custom-made t-shirts, and this is me giving an example. Well, the kids um, still working on these little uh, fossil dinosaur computers, huh, I'm just going to go buy 10, 20 laptops. You know, for the kids can have something to work on and be technology technologically sound and up to date. You see what I'm saying? That's the kind. That's what power makes. Dr. Umar Johnson is trying to build a school for black boys. I think it's just phenomenal. People dissing them and hating them and all that kind of stuff. I tell them don't listen to that. But he needs five million dollars. It's very hard to get five million dollars. I seen the other day Floyd was driving a one point a three point two million dollar car. But if we had the power to take our money and be smart enough and to not feed into companies that don't really care about us, put them into the future of our kids, then we can go do great things. And that's not using Florida as an example because he does a lot of great things and people don't know, you know, but I'm sure he's a great dude, but I'm just making the point is you understand what, what I'm going to correlation. You understand. Anyway, so buying black. Two, like I said again, is voting. And I don't mean voting on a presidential election because this presidential election is a sham. I just had talked to a man who said I sent our boys to college and I do this discussion. I can go to Brown Brother Web on, at, at Twitter and follow me. And I do this discussion every every second Thursday of the month. And you can get on there and do it too. All people are welcome on there. And it's called Send Our Boys to College where basically we get on there and discuss ways to send young boys of color to college and figure out how to be better role models, examples, or whatever it may be, or we just share resources on there to help each other to mentor young black boys and do everything. But anyway, a uh, discussion that we had um, um, that was very interesting um, um, and very uh, enlightening is we were talking about the presidential election. What do young black boys think? And I said, all the black males that I know, young and old, are kind of like, let's just do for stuff for the next four years. Okay, you got one presidential candidate, um, uh, and I'm not going to call him by the name because I'm not trying to get sued, I'm not trying to get flagged, but one presidential election is profiting off the off the prison, the private privatization and privatization of the prison system versus another candidate who is reinforcing negative, negative stereotypes of young black males by calling young black boys predators, which basically predator means that to kill them and to exterminate them, just like I talk about trap music, the the root word you need to pay attention to each and every word is the trap to fall into the trap predator to kill this person because they are preying on you which is false because most there are more black males in college than there are in jail and thank god that um on the presidential candidate i'm talking about who uh close relative or relationship they're in uh that president put more black males in prison than any other president in in years there is and he helped establish and continue the war on drugs that has now put more black males now currently in prison than there were more black males in bondage during slavery that's some stuff is go read you know mass incarceration and uh the new jim crow that's a phenomenal book anyway like number two like i said again you can go see go vote on the local level like i said again mayor um, city councilman, all this, you've seen what happened in Ferguson, and you've seen what kind of mess that was because because um, we were so fed up with the community, I mean, uh, not our community, but the community's um, um, pleas to um, uh, the uh, political uh, system, or at least to your local government, to try to fix things, they wouldn't do that. So what we have to do is find people to put into office to change things. I'll give you one quick example. Like I said, I'm trying to make this video under 30 minutes. I hope I don't bore y'all by doing all this talking, but I have a lot of ideas and a lot of things I hope can help. But anyway, um, it's a city, a very, very small city that I know very, very well, uh, especially just as a little boy driving up and, and back and forth um, to visit my grandparents. And they had this mayor that's, that was running for office 
And then they had a young brother who was also running for office. One person had been inside there a while. People were saying didn't the person didn't make good decisions, didn't do anything. Versus this young brother, he came with a plan. College educated. Told them what he was going to do to change the community. Young brother. Said he was going to change the community. How he was going to be able to put business inside the community. Hire more police of color. Hire more police to patrol the neighborhoods. To keep everybody safe. How he was going to use programs to put into place that kids can go out there and as soon as they leave they can go to college and do so forth and so on. Well, nobody turned up to support the young brother. Everybody was saying he had the great ideas, he had the best ideas, he was the best candidate, but nobody voted to support the brother. They kept the mayor that's in right now and now they're saying the city is going through terrible financial positions and it's just all over the news for a while. I don't know about the situation now because I don't keep up with it. But I make the point of this, you had a great alternative and you had somebody who was willing to substantially change or at least try to change versus the person that you've seen has not done anything. So you've seen what happened in Ferguson and DOJ report when it came out of Ferguson. This has been happening for years and years. We have to vote to get rid of the people who don't who are not in our best interest and put in people somehow, some way, no matter the no matter if they don't have a brand, no matter if you don't know them, whether they're not related to no family, put in the best person to give us the best opportunity to succeed in life. So I make the point is go out there and vote on a local level. Number three, and this is probably the most important, even if you ignore everything else I say, put your money in black banks. I just figured out about a month ago that there are 21 black banks left in America. Now, all these black banks are gone. Shame on us. Nobody else. Shame on us. Take We got to take responsibility for this one. That if we're so willing to put our money in Wells Fargo, I'm willing to put our money in, 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 in Morgan Chase, who are profiting off slavery. Uh, 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 it's a lot of other banks, too, who profit off slavery. Uh, I may even try to tell you that. Or I may just leave the story from the Atlanta Black Star, which basically said that these companies had stocks and bonds on the slaves and that they used slaves as collateral and that they made money out in taxes off of the slaves. So I say all this to say all that. Put your money in black banks. We need to have black money circulating in our community, but we also need to put money in black banks. You know, not saying that Wells Fargo doesn't hire. You know, not saying that all these people. You know, they. I. You know, you can go inside of a bank or inside of a Chase Morgan, or you can go inside of a um, uh, not mutual somebody. It's a, it's a lot of big banks somewhere, regions or whoever it may be, and you may see um. You may see African American people working there, but at the same time, we only have 21 banks left. What are how are we diversifying and making sure that the financial end that we're in the best position possible? When we only have to go to big bank companies, when there's smaller African American banks there to build and grow and to put money into the community and to try to change things, because we've been yelling for hope and we've been yelling for change for years and years and years, but we haven't really seen it and it's been at a standstill. While I'm giving you the golden ticket, I'm giving us information that we can do to change things. So number, the one of the greatest things I tell you is support black banks. And let's make sure that we can get more in the community. Let's make sure that we can change things. And let's make sure that we can keep some kind of diversity inside each and every field, whether it be the medical field, whether that be the um, the teaching field. And I'm going to get to that in a few minutes and so forth and so on. This is what we can do. Uh, and so I definitely would just stress as hard as I can above anything else to definitely try to put your money in black banks. Uh, number four is mentorship. Without mentorship is an unsung hero of the black community. Like you said again, because there are so many black fathers um, uh, in the system, uh, because there are so many uh, fathers that got killed in this uh, Iraq and Afghanistan war, which now a lot of the high-ranking high generals are going back and saying we should have never went into in the first place. Because there are so many um, fathers uh, uh, just in so many situations or whatever it may be, or even if it is whatever it may be, or even a, a, a single father, because there's some single fathers out there, a single mother may, um, uh, because of the GMO and the food, may have, uh, have uh, uh, illness, or, or, or the mother may have went and served her country, and there's a lot of uh, women that people don't know, particularly, like I said, again, the army cadets, uh, uh, black women soldiers. There are so many situations in the community uh, that have caused for us to be hurt, and damage, or even not even that, just needing the correct hands to mold us, that we need um, mentorship. Without mentorship, we, this com uh, our community, our inner city, our everything will be lost. So shout out to the mentorships. 
So get involved in the movement. Get involved in the community. Not just the protest, not just this, not just that, but let's every day do whatever we can. Now, even if we can't physically be a part of the mentorship program, let's see, can we do this? How about this? Instead of buying uh, sodas every day for work, um, let's go drink water. Does that make sense? I get a cup of water with that meal. Um, here it comes, just this a long analogy, but just listen to this. Instead of buying lunch every day, go see, can we go make lunch one day out of the week? Instead of spending ten dollars and getting some wings, go home get a package of wings, season them yourself. That little three dollars, five dollars, five dollars you save every week, times that by four weeks in a month is twenty dollars you can save for that whole entire month. Take that twenty dollars, go find a black uh, organization or or mentorship program so that there can be some mentorship programs in the community and so forth and so on and we can use that money uh, and 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 to help as many what as we can because the number one reason why most mentorship and organization black mentorship organization fall out of place or disappear or stop running is because of lack of funding you know so definitely check that out uh, grant writing is another thing. If anybody knows how to write grants and do scholarships and stuff, share that information because that will be that is the absolute next phase for Black America is finding grants and opportunities to change the communities. There are plenty of options to change the communities. Go watch a documentary on PBS. It's such a phenomenal um, uh, documentary about a revitalization program in Washington D.C. and you will show that they're revitalizing the community. Paying uh, brothers who who had priors and who needed to get back on their feet and everything, but they're doing this through grant writing. So none of the money even goes out of our pocket. It's government funded programs. It goes out of our pocket through taxes. But you understand what I mean? Taxes are a given, and we don't really miss taxes and 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 the, then the dips and stuff they take out of our checks as much as we do physically reach into our, our pockets so you understand where I'm coming from. So just definitely go fund, support, and understand the, the process behind uh, 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 non-profits and definitely go do that. And last but not least, let's see what else I had. I was going to give you five. Last but not least, just be a vessel. Spiritually gain knowledge, spiritually gain truth. If every if we took a ten percent from every church that's on one specific Sunday, I'm sure, and threw it back into the community wholeheartedly without doing nothing else, we can have a Sunday service outside. Uh, uh, we can do other things, go into the community, then we could change the world. We could change our community. You know how much ten percent of tithes is that goes into the Pacific Church or the Pacific anything or just sales taxes, 10% sales taxes. You know how small 10% is. We don't miss it when it's gone. Now imagine if we could use it and actually have direction into what we're using it in. We could change the world and we could do so many great things. So like I said again, I just say number five is just simply taking our opportunities that we get every single day, bettering ourselves, bettering our communities, Taking our time, a lot of us got time on our hands, young brothers got time, go go the lawn more, go cut the elderly people, grass in the neighborhood. Like I said, again, we don't need a university, uh, and, all, and shout out to them for doing what they do, that's great, no, no disrespect, because I appreciate what they're doing, because it's people who had the effort but didn't want to do it. So we don't need the University of Florida, or the University of, of, of California, or whoever. Being able to come down here, we are be able to do that for ourselves. So we have every able able bodied people and then we figure out how to get the finance to buy the paint and the siding or just the paint period, because a lot of them just paint and cut grass, simple stuff. We can do that ourselves. Let's take time to invest in our community, look around and see what we can do immediately, which is put our money in black banks, which is start cutting the grass, which is painting which is helping the elderly people with their bags. Let's change the community and let's go back into not making America great again because America has never been great with all the tension and destruction and so forth that we had. But let's go make our communities great again because I remember a time, personally in our communities, even before I was born, where things ran smoothly, where kids answered, yes, sir, no, ma'am, yes, no, sir, yes, ma'am. They answered with ma'am and sir. I remember back in the day in the community where you could walk down the street and not have to be scared of anything. Well, we, if we had to settle a squabble, we settled it with our fists and we didn't settle it with guns. And the best man won that day, but you best better believe things went right on like it never happened, like nothing ever happened. 
Well, we didn't call each other by the N-word, but we said brothers. Well, we respected women. We never called them a B-word. We went and dreamt in a thousand years to use the same mouth that we say mom with to go use a dirty, ugly word as a B-word or the N-word toward our brother or our sister. So I definitely just say just do whatever you can to change the community for the now. That's all we got to do. And after we finish protesting, we can actively say what now. And we have a plan, and we have a structure, and we have a course of action. And I promise you, we do that just for one year straight. I promise you, I'll never say it again. Matter of fact, you can sign a petition and have me deported out the country. If we do it, just do it for one year and get all the people, even though that may be impossible, but try to get as many people as possible to do it. I guarantee you, our communities will change drastically. Our situation will change drastically. And we put our money where our mouth is. And I guarantee you, the little settlements would not be coming less and less because these situations would not happen. Because you hurt people where it hurts the most, and that's their pocket. You hurt people's pocket, it's over with. So just go out there and take pride take in, in knowing that you're doing a great job and that you're being conscious and aware. But also take opportunity to go out there and change and do active change and the best change possible. But that's it. Like I said, again, hope everybody has a great day. Uh, peace and many blessings. Always like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment in the description below. And I'm on to the next one.